Hi and welcome to Ordering Fractions and Decimals. Just before we start, a quick reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so today we're going to begin by putting fractions in ascending order. So before we start, just a little word, uh, ascending, uh, that just means to go up. So we want it, uh, all of our fractions in order from smallest up to biggest. If we were looking for um, it going biggest to smallest, going down, then it would be called descending order. But ascending order meaning increasing. Now, in order to do that, if I want to compare fractions and decide which one is the biggest, which one's the smallest, and what goes in between, well, I need to have a common denominator. It's the only way to compare them directly together. So how are we going to find a common denominator between 3 fifths, 7 tenths, 1 half and 13 twentieths? Well, what we are looking for is a common multiple of 5, 10, 2 and 20. And in this case, we've actually been helped out because um, there is a number already there which will work. 20. 20 is a multiple of 5 and 10 and 2 and therefore we can make all of our fractions have denominators of 20. If we do that all we need to do is we need to make sure we create the equivalent fractions and to do that we just need to say well how have I turned 5 into 20? Well I've multiplied by 4 so I need to do that at the top as well 3 times 4 is 12. In the second one how have I turned 10 into 20? Well that is times 2 so 7 times 2, 14. In the third one, I, how have I turned 2 into 20? Well, I've multiplied by 10, so I do that at the top as well. And in the last one, how have I turned 20 into 20? Well, I haven't done anything at all. It's been left exactly the same. And therefore, that one is still 13 over 20. Now that we have common denominators, we can just now compare the numerators in order to decide what is the smallest fraction. Well, the smallest number we have is 10. And so 10 twentieths is my smallest fraction. But I'm going to write it as it started out as, as a half. Then, if 10 has already gone, we look at the remaining ones and we have 12 coming next. But that was 3 fifths. Then we have 13 twentieths, and that is how it started. And finally, we have 14 twentieths, but that is 7 tenths and so we've put them in order from smallest to biggest so let's try that again with the fractions a half seven twelfths five sixths and one third we need to find that common denominator again is there a number that two twelve six and three will all go into well in this case they'll all actually go into 12 and so we'll make all of our fractions have a denominator of 12 and then all we need to do is decide how we've gotten there. So 2 to 12, well that is times 6. So do the same at the top, 1 times 6 is 6. From 12 to 12, well that's already the same, so we'll just keep it as 7. From 6 to 12, that's times 2, so I'll do the same at the top. And from 3 to 12, that is times 4. So I'll do the same at the top, 1 times 4 is 4. And so... All I need to do now is decide which of these is my smallest fraction. I've got 6 twelfths, 7 twelfths, 10 twelfths and 4 twelfths. Well, 4 is the smallest number there. And so we'll begin with a third. Then we have 6 twelfths, so that is a half. 7 twelfths, which is what it started out as. And finally 10 twelfths, which was 5 sixths. And one more. We've got um, a half, two thirds, three fifths, and one sixth. So, in this case, we need to find a common denominator of two, three, five, and six. Now, in this case, we have a problem. We can't just use one of the numbers which is already there because the largest number we've got is six, but five does not go into six. So, we'll need to try to find a number which five and six will both go into. And a quick way of doing that, if I just multiply 5 by 6, I get 30. So 30 is definitely a multiple of 5 and 6. Is it a multiple of 2? Yes. Is it a multiple of 3? Yes. So 30 is going to work perfectly. So let's put 30 on the bottom of each fraction. And once again, we just need to look. How have I turned 2 into 30? 
Well, I've multiplied by 15, so I'll do the same at the top. How have I do, turned 3 into 30? I multiplied by 10, so I'll do the same at the top. How did I turn 5 into 30? I times by 6, so I'll do the same at the top. And how have I turned 6 into 30? I've multiplied by 5. I'll do the same at the top. And now all I need to do, again, it's ascending order, so going up. So I want to find the smallest fraction first. Well, the smallest one is going to be 5 thirtieths, which is a sixth. And then 15 thirtieths, which is a half. Then 18 thirtieths, which is a three fifths. And finally, 20 thirtieths, which is two thirds. So next we're going to look at putting decimals in ascending order. So again, ascending going up, we want to start with our smallest decimal and uh, go up to our largest decimal. Now, when it comes to decimals, the key here is that we need to make sure that we can compare them directly together, just like we did with the fractions. But in this case, what that means is making sure we have the same number of decimal places. So our largest one has three decimal places. And so I need to have three decimal places in every other number. And to do that, all I'm going to do is add zeros to fill in those placeholders. And so now I have three digits in each case for the decimal places. And so now all I'm going to do is write those numbers one on top of the other. And if we look at this now, we can take it that in order to decide which one is the largest number, I'm going to start at the far end, I'm going to start with the largest. Well, we look at the first digits, they're all zero, so that isn't helping. So if I go to the second digit, I have zero, two, zero, zero. What is the largest value there? Well, the two is the largest value. Therefore, this one must be my biggest number, and that is 0 0.2. So let's take that one out of our list and then move on to the next column. If I have a look at these digits, I have a two, a zero and a five. What is going to be the largest one there? Well, the five is obviously the largest value and therefore that is our next largest number. That is 0 0.05. But we also had a 2 in here. So that must be the next largest, the 0 0.02. And then finally, we're left with one final answer, 0 0.009. And so in order, our, our values are 0 0.009, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, and 0 0.2. Let's try it again for 0 0.3, 0 0.304, 0 0.31, and 0 0.3002. In this case, what is the largest number of decimal places? Well, it is 1, 2, 3, 4. And so in each case, I want to add zeros so that I can match up with the number of decimal places. And again, I just want to write these out in full, one on top of the other. And now all I want to do is again have a look at the values. They're all starting with a zero. They all start with a three after that. So actually I can go all the way to the third digit. If I have a look at this, I've got a zero, a zero, a one, and a zero. And therefore the largest value that I have is this one here. So that was 0 0.31. Let's take that out of our list. We'll move on to the next column and now we have zero four zero well four is obviously the largest number there and so that is my next largest number zero point three zero four and if I move on to the last column well I've got um, three and a zero and two here which is the largest well it's zero 0 0.3002 and then finally these 0 0.3000 which was just 0 0.3 to begin with and so the smallest value here was 0 0.3 followed by 0 0.3002 0 0.304 and 0 0.31 
one last example, 0 0.782, 0 0.78, 0 0.79, and 0 0.7899. The largest number of decimal places, one, two, three, four. So let's make sure we have four decimal places in all of our numbers. And let's write them one on top of each other. And so at this point, let's have a look at our digits. Well, the first two digits are all 0 0.7. So I'm going to go all the way to the third digit in these numbers. And I have 8, 8, 9, 8. So which one is the largest? Well, it must be the 7, 9. So this is going to be my largest number, 0 0.79. If I move on to the next column, well, I have, in this case, a 2, a 0, and a 9. What's the largest digit that we've got there? Well, the largest one is the 9. And so next up comes 0 0.7899. If we keep looking, we've then got a 2 compared to a 0. Well, 2 is obviously bigger than 0, and therefore the next one will be 782. And finally... The last digit that we have left is the zero, and so this must be my smallest value, 0 0.78. In our final example, we're going to look at um, putting a mixture of decimals and fractions in the correct order. Now, in this case, what you're going to find is um, the fractions used will be um, fractions which it is expected you know already the um, decimal equivalent to, or one that you can quite quickly work out. In this case, um, you've got three quarters and two thirds. It is assumed that you will know the decimal equivalent of three quarters, and that decimal equivalent is 0 0.75. Two thirds, again, it's expected that you will know that that is actually a recurring decimal, 0 0.66666, on and on and on. And so when we try to put these values in order, we're now just going to deal with them as decimals. And so in the same way as we did before, we want to check how many decimal places we need. Well, this one, actually the decimal places go on forever. But as long as I make everything three decimal places here, we'll be able to judge this as is. And so 0.700. 0 0.750, 0 0.790, 0 0.66, and actually if we go to three decimal places there, it's 0 0.667. And now all we need to do is compare. We have a 7, a 7, a 7, and a 6, and therefore the smallest value this time, we can definitely say the smallest one must be 0 0.667, but 0 0.667 well, that is the two thirds. So that is our smallest value. If we keep going to the next one, we've used that one. And so if we look at the next digits, we have zero, we have five, and we have nine. Therefore, the next smallest one would actually be 0 0.700, which was 0 0.7. If we keep going, the next largest value would be the five, and therefore 0 0.75, which began life as three quarters. And finally, if we take the very last one, that was 0 0.79. We've placed those uh, fractions and decimals in the correct ascending order. So for 0 0.431, 7 tenths, 0 0.67 and 2 fifths, the same applies. What I'm going to be doing here is I want to turn everything into a decimal. Now, in this case, 7 tenths, it is expected that you'll be able to quickly identify things which are tenths, because whenever it is a tenth, that is just going to be 0, point, and then the number on the top, 0 0.7. And so anything that is tenths, you just write the numerator as the first decimal place, 0 0.7. But two fifths, now you may uh, already know what fifths look like in terms of decimals, but if you aren't too sure, you could convert this into a fraction over 10. We've doubled the bottom, so we'll double the top. It's four tenths, and therefore in the same way, 
it will be 0 0.4. And so now that we've got all decimals, we just want to compare those together by making sure they all have the same number of decimal places. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so if I write all of those out, 031, 0 0.700, 0 0.670, 0 0.400, 0 0.400. If we have a look at the first digits, well, we in this case, I've got a 4, a 7, a 6, and a 4. So the main thing I can pick out here is that 0 0.7 must be my largest value. And so 7 tenths is the biggest number. Then we've got 464. So what that actually also tells me is that the next biggest number must have been 0 0.67. So let's place the 0 0.67 as the next one. And then all we want to do is check the next digit as they were both fours to begin with. We have a three and we have a zero. So the next largest number must be this one, 0 0.431. And the final value would be this one, 0 0.400, which began life as two fifths. And so in order, we would have two fifths, 0 0.431, 0 0.67, and 7 tenths. And one more example, we've got 0 0.4, 1 quarter, 3 tenths, 0 0.305. Same situation, this time we've got a quarter. Now a quarter is one of those fractions that you are expected to know the decimal equivalent of. One quarter is 0 0.25. And then we also have three tenths. And three tenths, that is one that we should be able to work out. It's just going to be 0 0.3. And so now all we want to do is compare all of our fraction, uh, all of our decimals by making sure they have the same number of decimal places. Three in each case. And writing them out one on top of the other. And as we do that, we can have a look at the very first uh, decimal place. And we can see straight away that we've got 4, 2, 3, 3. 4 is clearly the largest value there. And therefore, 0 0.4 is my largest number. Then we have 2, 3, 3. So one thing we can pick out here is that 0 0.25, well, that must be the smallest value. And so the quarter would go at the front. Then it just comes to the other two values in the middle. If we carry on to the next digit, they're both zeros, so that isn't helping. But if we carry on one further along, we have a zero, and then we have a five. So 305 must be the larger of the two numbers, and 0 0.3 must be in the middle, there at three tenths. We've put them in the correct order. And we will end with the exam question. It came from the Edexcel paper in June 2017, and it was on foundation paper two. So that's actually a calculator paper. So if you wanted to, you could use a calculator to help um, to actually convert these fractions um, if you wanted to. Um, here are four fractions, two fifths, 11 thirtieths, one half, and seven fifteenths. Write these fractions in order of size, start with the smallest fraction. Um, so what we want to do here, as it's all fractions, we need to make sure we have a common denominator. And to do that, we just need to see what is a common multiple of 5, 32, and 15. And once again, you've actually been given a little bit of a help because 30 will work perfectly for each of them. So let's go with 11 thirtieths. We'll have 30 for the first one, 30 for the third, and 30 for the fourth. How have I turned 5 into 30? Well, I've multiplied by 6, so I'll do the same at the top. gives me 12. How have I turned 2 into 30? I've multiplied by 15, so I'll do the same at the top. And how have I turned 15 into 30? I've times by 2. I'll do the same at the top. Now, it's all just a case of deciding which one is the smallest of these fractions. Well, if we have a look, 11 is smaller than all of the other numerators, so 11 thirtieths is going to come first. Then we get 12 thirtieths would be next, but that started out as 2 fifths. Then we will have 14 fiftieths, uh, 14 thirtieths, sorry, uh, which started life as 7 fifteenths, and end with 15 over 30, which was 
a half. And so now we've got our fractions from smallest to biggest.